Welcome back everyone to Ashon Comics. This is a review of Thor number two by Donny Cates, Nick Klein, um, coloring by Matt Wilson because, you know, we need to have colors on the cover. I wasn't going to buy this co this comic and then I saw Matt Wilson was coloring. I was like, holy shit, I need to get, no one ever does that, <laughs> but oh, moving on. Um, I really liked this comic a lot and I was going to do an Ash on review or, you know, video going more in depth about the book because I think this is one of those books that could really deserve that. Um, but I'm behind. Thor number three is already out, and it's tough with these bi-weekly comics. It's really tough keeping up um, with comics. And uh, let's just move on. Uh, here's the text of what's going on in case you want to read it. Uh, this is part two of the story, and we start off, What will you do when the end comes, when your past and your future cease to be? When the entirety of you, sorry, when the entirety of who you are and who you will ever be becomes moot in the silent, indifferent cold that falls across your universe, will you scream prayers to your gods? Will you clasp your hands in hopes that your noble defenders will arrive? You will. They all do. And just like the denizens of this particular universe, your gods will arrive. Now take a look at this top frame here. Who does this look like? If you're not saying Superman, I think you're lying. <laughs> this is clearly meant to be an image meant to evoke Superman flying through Metropolis. Here you have the Daily Planet, big globe on a building. What other, you know, this is Superman. But they don't ever say he's Superman. They simply move on to say a sun god. A god of emerald light, a god of dark, perhaps, a god of the ocean, of speed, of strength. So here we have, you know, Superman, the Flash, um, Green Lantern. Um, I guess they're referring to Batman, god of dark. I don't know. Um, that doesn't matter. It's just clearly, the Justice League. Donny Cates has done a little sly uh, nod over there to the distinguished competition. And he doesn't do it a way that uh, is meant to mock or ridicule. It's, it's very much uh, done respectfully. We get to see that basically he's using the DC universe as another universe. Because uh, he's, he, he's telling the story that there are more than the Marvel universe. And they are all together, really. This universe, like so many before it, is protected by leagues of gods. Many of them as powerful as those you have always known and marveled at. And all of them, united, powered beyond imagination by the belief of the faithful, will not be enough. For they too will look into the eyes of the Black Winter, and they will see the stone-faced avatar of the true, one true end. For them, their Omega, the one who is. And there, staring at the encroaching dark, these mighty heroes will do what everyone before them has done. They will cry and scream and pray for their gods to save them. And then, as with everything, they will die. Planet One, Clips, now. And yet, a universe away, there is Thor, the god king of Asgard and Thunder the burning herald of Galactus. And to all of this, the herald king says, nay. <laughs> this is a wonderful opening to a comic book. And Donny Cates is really good at doing these things and setting the stage. And I was hooked right for here. I was like, sweet. Um, I, I, this comic was fantastic. Now you look at this next frame here and we see Galactus with his you know, his world-eating technology machine thing, and uh, Thor is basically telling Galactus that they found that one of the five planets that they're looking for, these five, we'll just call them super planets, and they call them enchanted planets, basically these special planets that Silver Surfer has hidden from him forever um, because they will give him a, a immeasurable power, um, and Thor comes to find, and... Uh, 
this one's inhabited. And Galactus reminds him and says, Though you may keep the coordinates locked away from me in your mind, know that Galactus is yet the only thing that stands between universal life and death. And then Thor responds, I, and I stand between you and this planet. So Thor's not going to let him ravage this planet. Galactus is basically trying to make the appeal of like, um, I think the universe dying is a little bit more important than one planet. And it plays, you know, the, the that prototypical kind of uh, scenario, the, the conundrum that hero, hero comics and just hero stories in general uh, play off of always is the greater good. And what's moral? Is it is it moral to 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 kill one life to save a thousand you know um so i was a little bit kind of like come on thor really you're trying to save the universe here um but again it it's it's a moral thing it's a principal thing um and so thor basically uh is is uh an obstacle for Galactus at this point. They can't. Um, so they get kind of a little tiff. They fight. We get a really cool scene. Look at this here. Thor <laughs> throws his hammer and goes through um, Galactus's finger. It looks like it severs it. Just cool shots here. The dynamicism is something that's been missing in a lot of modern mainstream superhero comics. I'll just say Marvel comics. And Galactus is like, you dare strike Galactus? And Thor, uh, of course, he's not dismayed. He's a god. And they get in a nice fight. Look at this. Look at this shot here of the hammer coming back and then coming through Galactus's knee. Um, and so he's like, "I will tell you this once, Galactus. Though you have named me herald and title and power, and check this out. He's this. The hammer's coming back to his hand. I remain a king and a god, and I shall not suffer threats nor instruction from you or from oomph." <laughs> and a big boulder hits him. And then it's the denizens of the planet. Because they don't recognize who these people are. And they're just like, what the hell? And they just see that their planet's going to get destroyed. And they start attacking Thor. And then Galactus uses this time to start setting up his world-devastating, consuming machines, you know, so that he can feed. Um, Thor sends his ravens off uh, to Asgard to basically kind of prep the way to op extend the Bifrost. And that's how he's going to evacuate this planet. Now, it takes a little bit of a stretch of my imagination here. This is the part where I was a little bit like, come on, Donnie. Like, I don't know how many people are on this planet. It, all I say is it's inhabited. I usually tend to think of a planet, an inhabited planet, to be at least millions of denizens. But maybe it's primitive. They are, you know, my, maybe there's a couple hundred thousand. I, I don't know. They all get evacuated to Asgard, which is a city. <laughs> it's like a giant city. Like, so the, the logistics of it all, here they are, it's like, you know, lining up and they're signing pen and paper. I'm like, this is, it, it works on a comic page, but once you start actually thinking about the reality of it all, you're like, this never would work. So you just sort of have to like suspend your disbelief and just be like, whatever, <laughs> it's comics. Um, and uh, I like how Thor uses his, the ravens, um, which are a big part of the mythos and... Um, yeah, it just it was really cool. He speaks to them. Finally, they're able to, to eat the planet, and Galactus is full of power. And, and Thor's like, Galactus, enough. You'll kill us both. Galactus is like, more. Um, and he just keeps consuming. And so Thor was just hoping he could consume the energy of the planet and leave it alone. He promised the people they could return. But he annihilates the whole planet. And uh, look at this shot here. Galactus is powered up. And Thor's like, you didn't have to break it. Um, and Glax like, it was necessary, as is this. And he's about to just blast Thor. Um, and so we skip over, and then we see some explosions hammering Galactus, and we're like, what's going on? Thor's hammer comes to his hand, and Beta Ray Bill shows up. Thor, I need to speak with your master. Please, brother, do not make me go through you. And it's to be continued. And this is what a Marvel comic should be like. Um, I, It's everything that you want. It's got great action. It's got great characters. It's got great dynamic scenes that you could just not really... Well, 
it's getting harder and harder to say you couldn't put it on a big screen. Uh, that's what used to be the way, like comics, you could never do this on the big screen, but nowadays you can almost do anything. But even still, Donnie Cates is really trying to push the the uh, the, the envelope there. He's, he's trying to, to keep that understanding that in comics you don't have a budget, right? You can do anything that your mind can imagine. Um, I love Beta Ray Bill's one of my favorite characters. I love the scuttlebutt. I like that this, I'm assuming this is scuttlebutt behind Beta Ray Bill. Um, and we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a throwdown, and Beta Ray Bill's probably one of the best Thor adversaries ever. Um, he's beloved by fans. Donny Cates gives you trust that you're in good hands. Uh, the story of Galactus um, powering Thor up as one of his heralds is very interesting. You get this great kind of um, back and forth between Thor and Galactus and their motives and what they're trying to achieve. They both are trying to achieve saving the universe but both of them have a different idea of how to go about doing it. Um, it's, it's, and then you're on for the ride. Like This is an adventure, and you you know the universe is going to be saved. You as a reader in the back of your mind, you're like, I know. They're gonna... But it's not about whether or not the universe is going to be saved. It's how are they going to accomplish this? How, is, how are they going to do this? And Donnie Cates keeps you guessing the whole way through. It's an interesting plot. The art here, as you can see, is really well done. It's not the greatest art ever, but... Um, for today's day and age, Marvel, it's it's really eye popping, and you get some really cool scenes of Galactus annihilating shit. Um, I, I mean, look at that! I love the scene of the hammer just blowing out through Galactus's knee. Um, this is a really cool page. So this is a high recommend. This is a four star book. Um, I hope you're enjoying Thor. I'm so glad that the Destroyer, uh, Jason Aaron, is now gone, no longer destroying one of my favorite Marvel characters. Uh, that the character is getting one of the best writers who understands cosmic stuff. He understands big mythology. One of the things about Donny Cates is when you read one of his books, you're not just getting that book. He incorporates his mythology and what's going on through all of his books. Um, so you get little tastes here and there. Um, Silver Surfer Black is plays off to what he did back in the Thanos Wind story that he did a couple years prior. It also connects to his Venom run. So... If you like continuity, if you like things mattering in this open universe, um, this shared universe, Donny Cates is your man. He's also imaginative. He brings you things you haven't seen before. Um, and he's a competent writer to tell fun stories. So I recommend. Hope you're enjoying this book. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me what comics you want to see reviewed. And I will see you again next time. Thanks for watching.